When looking at quadratics, uh, one of the key features is that they all have a vertex. In other words, a maximum or minimum. So I'm going to show you a little bit about that right now for the moment. So uh, let's draw a nice quadratic. So this is X, this is Y, and there's one. So this thing right here has a vertex. The vertex is just that. It's the maximum or minimum. It depends what kind of parabola it is. So in this case right here, this is the vertex. Now if I draw a different kind, maybe I draw one like, maybe one that opens downwards like this right here. This is also the vertex. Okay, so in this case, this vertex is a maximum value. In other words, it's as high as it gets. If you're looking at y values here, this is the highest y value you can find. Whereas over here, this is a minimum. Okay, so this vertex happens to be a minimum, whereas this vertex here happens to be a maximum. Every parabola has a vertex. It's just a matter of where you find it. So that's actually fairly straightforward. Um, and sometimes we want to find the coordinates of this. It helps us to draw it, to know how things line up. But we also have this thing called the axis of symmetry. That sounds kind of evil. It's like the axis of evil or well, the axis of symmetry. But uh, first of all, let's look at what symmetry actually is. So if two things are symmetri uh, symmetric, it means the same on both sides. So for example, if I have something like, um, I don't know, a box, you know, then there's a box like this right here. Um, if you look at this right here, I could, this could be a mirror and this left side is the same as the right side. If I had a cube, then I might have it to where, you know, the top and the bottom. In other words, a cube will have these two axes of symmetry. In fact, a cube will have more. A cube will have it here and even here, if it's a cube. Now you can look at something else like a triangle, for example. It depends how you draw it, but um, let's say this is an isosceles triangle, which means this length is different, but this length and this length are the same. Well, it turns out then you're going to have an axis of symmetry right through here. In other words, the left side will be the same as the right side. A lot of people even say that humans are symmetric, uh, but I'm a really lousy artist, but let's just uh, assume for a second this is, this is a person here. If you drew a straight line through a person, for the most part, the left side equals the right side. It's not exactly true. It depends on your haircut and all sorts of things. If you know, maybe you have some deformities or you have one arm longer than the other or who knows what you've done. Uh, but certainly your insides are not necessarily symmetric. But at least uh, on a large scale, humans are somewhat symmetric. Well, parabolas are symmetric as well. So the axis of symmetry uh, for a quadratic actually has an equation. So we're going to write this down. So we actually have an equation for it. And it goes like this. It's actually x is minus b over 2a. This is really helpful. So what that means is, remember, um, if you have an equation like y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, if you look at b and a, right, and you take minus b over 2a, that will give you the axis of symmetry. That will give you the x value of it. So in other words, if this is your graph here with an x and a y, and it goes like this right here, this axis of symmetry, this place where your graph is the same on the left and on the right, will happen at a very specific x value. So if you look at this, this is the x axis. So we have different x values, and the specific x value here for the axis of symmetry will be precisely at minus b over 2a. So that's really handy. I think another really useful thing is this too, that the axis of symmetry, um, what I really like about this is that it's always halfway between the intercepts, the x-intercepts. So it's halfway between the, oops, I need to write a little bit clearer, the x-intercepts. In other words, you can maybe use this to go a little bit backwards. So maybe maybe someone tells you the x-intercept is this value and this value. As long as they tell you that, 
take halfway between these two and that's where your vertex is. Or uh, what if you know the vertex uh, or the axis of symmetry, sorry, and what if you know the axis of symmetry and one of the x-intercepts? Then you'll know the position of the other one just by saying, well, this distance times two. That gives you that distance there. So the axis of symmetry is halfway between the x-intercepts. That's a really useful thing. Now, if we look at this, uh, we can look at an example. So if we want to write the axis of symmetry for this equation here, then we can actually try to do it. So if I look at this, then I want to try to write this out. So first of all, what's a? a is the number in front of the x squared. So a is 1. b, however, is the number in front of x. So that's minus 4. And c is plus 2. Now this is going to be useful for other things, like when we want to solve for the x-intercepts or we want to find the zeros or the roots. Keeping in mind what a, b, and c are is going to be important. It's going to tell us a lot about this graph. But for the moment, if we just want the axis of symmetry, we know that the axis of symmetry happens at x equals minus b over 2a. Right, that's what we had back here. x equals minus b over 2a. So if I go back to where I was, minus b over 2a, that means x happens at, let's see, minus negative 4 gives me plus 4. That's what minus minus is. So minus 4, uh, sorry, plus 4 over 2 times a, which is just 2. So that gives me x then equals, so what's 2 over, sorry, 4 over 2? That's just x equals 2. So what that tells me, that's the axis of symmetry is x equals 2. Now if I want to try to sketch this, I can have some idea what it looks like, but I don't quite know everything I need in order to do it. But let's just see what we can figure out so far. So, so far, I know that, well, it's a quadratic because x squared here. I don't have an x cubed or square root or anything weird. I have an x squared and nothing higher. I know that it opens upwards because the term in front of the x is positive. In other words, it's not negative x, it's positive. So I know it goes, it goes something like this. I'll just uh, erase that. But I know it, it curves upwards. And now I know that the axis of symmetry happens at x equals 2. In other words... I know that at x equals 2 here, I have my axis of symmetry here. So that's somewhere where my graph is symmetric. Now the problem is, I don't know if it's like this, or if it's like this, or if it's like this, or even if it's really wide or really thin. I don't know yet. But what I do know is that at least the vertex is found somewhere at x equals 2. I could actually narrow it down by plugging in x equals 2 in here. So in other words, if I really wanted to go a little bit further, I could say, well, what's the y value when x equals 2? Because that's what this equation means. It tells me it's like a recipe for y. Right? As long as I know what the x value is, I can tell what y is. So I can actually go a little step further than just the axis of symmetry. I can actually tell where exactly this is. In other words, remember here when I was drawing it higher or lower? I can actually figure out exactly where that lies. So I'll do that now. If I look at x equals 2, that means I'll actually plug it in here. So I'll say, okay, great. I've got my value right here. So I'm going to say x is 2 here. So 2 squared is 4 minus 4 times 2, which is 8. And then after that, I add 2 to it. So that means I have 4 minus 8, which is negative 4. And negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. So that means now I know that it's at negative 2. That helps me because now I know actually the vertex is exactly here. I still don't know exactly how wide it is, but at least this helps. So this is sort of a trick to figuring out a little bit or getting a little bit further. Keeping in mind though, this is not really needed for our question. This was the question we needed to answer. Okay, this is where the axis of symmetry is, but we can go further.